pour it up top. Yeah. Stink on the sides. Yes. With that, welcome back <laughs> to Bad Bad Baby Dad. I'm your host, Mia Tyler. <laughs> and I am Stinky Milo. <laughs> Stinky no. Milo. And we are here talking about the word narcissist Oof. and narcissism, which I think is overused nowadays. It's so overused. So I would like to have an episode where we just kind of get to the yeah. the realness of it because everybody just throws it out nowadays. Everybody Everyone's just a narcissist. assumes if somebody like a bad baby dad, if they just everybody assumes they're a narcissist, but yeah. are they really? Is are yeah. they? Let's 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 break NPD. it down. Narcissistic yeah. personality disorder is a mental health condition in which people have an unreasonably high sense of their own importance. And there's so it's nuanced though. There's yeah. a lot when it goes to if you were with a narcissist, and especially if you're an empath. But I found this amazing book and in this book they asked 10 questions to see if you were actually with oh, a narcissist hit me can i ask you yes okay, okay. so and listeners l uh, answer these questions if if you have like a little paper or whatever oh, and man, see what I you score this. okay so this is to know if you were with a narcissistic abuser okay so narcissism is one thing narcissistic abuse is another um so here we go did your relationship with your partner get serious very quickly and almost seem too good to be true yes 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 all right we're one <laughs> okay. Instantly. One. One for one. Does your partner react to criticism with disproportionate anger? Oh, God, yes. So he didn't take any type of Oh, no, you criticism. cannot criticize him in any way. No reflection. It would turn back on me that I was being oh, man. a jerk. All right. We're two for two. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Just to be clear, you're talking about <clears throat> your baby daddy. Not, I was just going to say. Not your current. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, God. Rob. I was actually. Yeah. It's so funny because. I don't know if you know this, but I used to be married also 20 yes. years ago. Yeah. And I sometimes wonder if he was a narcissist. So as I was answering this towards baby daddy, oh. I was like, oh, was that him also? Yeah. But um, yes, just to preface, my current boyfriend, Joe, is wonderful and is him. not a narcissist. And it's just. I just met him last night. I love him, by the way. So nice. Shout out to Joe. Thank you. Joe's none of these things. No. 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 Okay. We love so Joe. yes, this is, this is no. previous. Yeah. I'm even asking myself. This. My relationship I'm, prior to Joe prior to is Joe. what I'm the, mentally. The yes. father of your kid. The father of my okay. beautiful child. Yes, he okay. is beautiful. Okay, number three. Did you find yourself at times walking on eggshells to avoid setting your partner off? At times? At times. Or constantly. Or always. Every single. <laughs> fucking. Even when I slept, he had a problem with the way I slept because I snore. Sorry. Dude. And it was like a nightmare. I mean. Every you know what you want to know something I that do. used to drive me nuts. So I know this is this is probably just me getting my therapy out, but I'm in. He had a problem with the way my mouth sat. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, and so which is funny because huh? I, I have I have Beautiful. TMJ. So my jaws hurt Lips. all the time, but I have a big mouth, and even when I was modeling, they always tell you to do this. Oh. Mouth open. You know, it, it's this look like hmm. my mom. Also, if if I go back and look I'm at pictures mom. of my mom yeah. in modeling, she always had her mouth open. Yeah, but that pouty. was just kind of like yeah. mouth open. And he used to hate it so much that my mouth was open. And so I would even have to walk on eggshells with that, like keep my mouth shut because he'd always Did be like, your partner hate the way that your <laughs> mouth rested? <laughs> if so, he's a fucking. That's but ridiculous. But it's like that's everybody's crazy. mouth. Yeah. He just always be like, your mouth's always open. And then your mouth's always open. My son Shut does it. it too. And I'm always like, I love that. I love it too. <laughs> but yeah, so I had to of walk all... on eggshells 24-7. No, that's seven. like crazy. There wasn't, yeah. there wasn't often, sometimes. It was every little thing could set him Dude, off. I dated a guy really quick on this one. I dated a guy, if I went to the grocery store and I was five minutes late, he would make me take my pants off and smell my underwear. Stop it. Swear. What? Swear to God. Would smell my underwear as what if- What is, wait, hold on. What does smelling your underwear like mean? thinking that maybe he could tell if I cheated because I was five minutes late with the bread. First of all, where am I gonna do this? I, I had to go to the grocery store first and get the bread, which I have. Yeah, we're, we're going to- Smell that was not my... okay. It wasn't I'm okay. so sorry that he Dude, did that. Dude, he was crazy, wow. by the way. We're not going to yeah. name him. But good okay, Lord. so we're three for three, man. That's not Jesus. good. Does your partner, pro you already said this, does your partner project their own traits onto others, including you? Wait, what does that mean? So like projection. Rob, you're smart. 
projection <laughs> like help us out i mean i know it's like when you feel a so like way when they would complain you. and say like oh you do this but it's really them doing it yeah and they're trying to blame you yeah yes what constantly. else rob like projection like, uh, like if you say oh you're 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 so lazy or whatever but really they're uncomfortable with themselves they have low self-esteem about they think they're lazy yes, yes. they take they take negative traits that they believe they have maybe rightly maybe incorrectly yeah yeah and they project them and onto throw you. it onto oh, yeah. you and it's really them. It's like this mirror that's backwards. Yeah. So is that a yes? Oh, yeah. He would also do that to everybody, though. Yeah. So others. when I say all this stuff, yes to me, he would yeah. do this with everybody. This is everybody. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're four for four. Four. Yeah, okay. It's a little four. scary. Okay. Did your partner express unjustified fear that you would or will cheat on him? No. No. Okay. He never thought I would cheat on him, but he would beat up any guy that... Ever would try you. to talk to me, just even say hi to me. He'd come over and like slap him or yeah, something or, fun. Yeah, that is fun. Okay, but okay. no, I never got accused of cheating. Okay, so never. he didn't. Okay, until after later, uh, later, when I started setting boundaries and was like, <laughs> "You're not going to do this to me anymore." Yeah, all of a sudden it was kicking my door down. You're ruining our family because he thought I was. Hanging something. out with somebody else because I went to. I'm gonna give a half a point for that, say, Rob. Point. Can half we do a half point? point. Okay. That's like you sort of did at the end. It was very at the end, and it was only one. We're instance. getting a half a point. You're four and a half out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Does your partner relish on being the center of attention? Yes. You either don't even in have to finish group... this. Oh shit! Yeah. Well, that's a yes. No, no. Go ahead, finish no, it. No, yeah, but in a group setting or one on one, just like needs to be the center of attention. Hundred, a hundred percent at you all know times. That's crazy. Even like thinking about that makes me so, you would think that like I would love something like that. I hate being the center of attention. And it's weird because of what I do for a living. But the guy that I was talking about that smelled my underwear, that was always a thing. I know, it was great. Um, like what would my underwear smell like, by the way? I, I, this is a whole thing that this I don't know. I know. Um, by Risque. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, that was a great. That is yeah. ditty. That was <laughs> um, going back to the center of <laughs> but, attention stuff. Yeah. So he was like the king of, or is the yeah. king of the Lower East Side, oh. and that's his claim to fame. Okay. He just, you know, he knows everybody. Everywhere he goes, they know him. Yeah. They say what's up, and they yeah. high five, and whatever. Um, so when he met me and I had celebrity or people knew who status, I was, yeah. it's status, that's what it was. Um, in his brain, I was better than him. Or so, like he thought I was better than him. Yeah. And it turned into this thing where he was very jealous mm -hmm. of the attention. So if somebody came up to me and wanted a picture or an autograph or something, he had a big problem with that yeah. because- It's not on him It now. wasn't him. Yeah. And he, at, times when he was inebriated would uh own up to certain things mm -hmm. probably didn't remember the next day yeah <laughs> but he would always say that like he had a he problem had with, with me that. being famous yeah or and then because he doesn't have enough confidence within himself the yeah self-esteem and i saw that instantly and so i'd always try to coddle or try to make the situation like oh you're you know you're great yeah. or i would try to like get him to write a tv show about boxing or something so he could yeah. go do something it's called dimming your light like yeah. literally you feel like you have to dim a little bit of who you are to make him feel okay like i'm yes. not that known i'm not that famous i'm not that great yeah you are fucking great and famous and have Thanks. great status Thanks. does your partner seem to feel like the world owes them something yes did he feel like he thinks the world owes him everything and it and he also was one of those um one-uppers that if you were like my mom was a single mom and yeah. she didn't have a car and walked everywhere. That story that you just told, he'd yeah. be like, oh yeah, well my, I fucking my dad's a like crackhead or yeah. something, you know, like, like to one up and be like, I went to crack houses or, you know what I mean? It was and like, it's like, you no. win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll take that loss. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why are we, I know exactly what you're saying though. And I hate when people do that. But it's also like, the, fl dude. the flip side of that is a lot of the times too, because I'm really close to his mom. Yeah. So I kind of know the other side. Yeah. A lot of the times he would try to one up people with fake stories. Of oh. Like, oh. Yeah. Like we're exaggerating it now and like we're like, living in a crack house. You, did, life, you never went like, to a crack house. You yeah. were not a crack baby. Yeah. Your mom didn't smoke crack. So you can't be a crack baby. Isn't that <laughs> like, crazy? Like that's the um, flex is like, I'm a crack baby. 
that I was Trying always to like, that doesn't that, make Rob. any sense. Why would you want to? Yeah, I grew up in a crack house. How about that? His mom's I never done a feel. drug in her life. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's a lot. OK, anyway, um, so have yes. your partner's prior relationships, including both work and personal end badly. Yes. Every single there's one a them. second part to this question, but it's one question. Was he always or she always the victim? Always. So like whatever happened prior. Yes. They were always fucked or wronged. Yes. They were never the one that like had. No. There's no reflection. There's no. no. That's another thing, man. Like reflection. I look back on relationships. I was wrong many times and I take that and own that. Like, why can't people do that? None of us are. Per Were you perfect in your past relationship? The one we're talking about? No, never. Did you make I've some I've never mistakes? been perfect in any relationship. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, own some of it and be well, like, dude, thing. I'm not yeah. perfect, but like, I'm going to try. My thing is like, I'm going to try to always be better in my next one. Yes. If we're talking about relationships. Yes. Like, this is the best version. Yeah. That my new guy gets. And I'm so happy. Like, you met this guy. I think that's a, um, a good indication of yourself too, if you want to do a little uh, inventory yeah, on yourself, because sometimes inventory. we don't know if we're narcissists or yeah, any of these other things. So if you say to yourself, okay, after a breakup, what could I have done wrong in that last relationship? And if you say nothing, yeah, then there's a problem. Then your question, you have a problem. Eight. Yeah, so yeah, there, there's some issues with you. You know, my therapist said, if you ask yourself, am I a narcissist? You're not a narcissist. Oh. Because a narcissist wouldn't ask that question. That's not true, though, because I when I started learning about narcissism and yeah. him and I did I did internal reflection because yeah. I was like, OK, yes, yes, yes. And yes to all these things for him. Yeah. And then one of those things that I had seen was like when you're a narcissist, you don't know you're a narcissist. Right. So I instantly went and was like, how do you know you're a narcissist and looked it up. And then I I read the, through the list and I said, no, I think I said yes to one thing. Yeah. But every Everything else I said no to. But so that, I mean, he would never ask that question. No. So therefore he would be like, oh, an, right. if you. But you, you said you're if not, you're a narcissist, you wouldn't. Ask that question. Ask, oh, right. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So like if he. So I'm he not ever, a narcissist. You're not a narcissist at all. <laughs> I'm not one either because I've asked that question. I'm like, am I? And she's like, literally, Brooke, love her. Like, she's like, because you're asking that question. That's your therapist? Yeah. Oh, she's nice. so good. Um, therapy. I highly recommend. Okay, last question. So we're at uh, eight and a half out of nine for you, by the way. Not if we're at the last question. Eight and a half out of nine, one more Maybe. 10. I don't know, but your no, baby daddy math. That, that math checks out. Oh, it does. Well, all I know is he's a fucking narcissist. I don't care what question <laughs> we're on. There was enough yeses in the beginning. Okay, <laughs> last one. Did your partner make you doubt yourself? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yes and no. Yeah. Um, I will give it to him. One thing. He's a he was a personal trainer. He's so good at it. Yeah. He really like in one week I lost a bunch of weight. Just he's really good at that. And I really hope for him. My hope for him is that he continues doing that because yeah. he's really good at it. But he would. He he's that good was at, really nice of you. Thank you. He's good at building people's uh, like confidence. Stuff. Yeah. He yeah. might like talk shit and tell you you're a fat fuck, but he will get you to a place where you feel good about yourself. So yeah. when it came to personal training, yeah, he was great. But outside of that, everything else. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. We're going to give him that one. I I will give him one I, thing. I love that. Yeah. We're not bashing. No. Totally. We're uplifting. We're uplifting. He gets one, one thing. But he's a fucking narcissist, by the way. And if you, I would say if you scored anywhere like above a seven. What I was going to say, Rob? what are the, how many do you well, have to have it? out of those? So right. it just says, ask these questions and then see if they, like it doesn't really give you, mm. if you score. Um, but yeah, I would assume though that if like the majority of these questions were a yes, you dated a fucking narcissist, man. And narcissism, let's like, let's define it before we even go yeah, further yeah. because everyone's a narcissist nowadays. There's two things I love about this. One, I love the fact that there's awareness. Right. And that people are talking about narcissism yeah. and mental health and all of that. That's the great thing. But having NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, that's a very specific thing. And not everyone is a narcissist if they're a dick. Mm. Just because someone wronged you and is a fuck doesn't necessarily mean that they're a narcissist. So I want to like define and I wrote it down. Um, OK, so narcissism. Actually, it's right in front of us. So the definition of NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, um, states that it compromises Comprises. Comprises. Wow, my eyesight, man. Comprises of a persistent manner of grandiosity. 
grandiosity, grandiosity, a continuous desire for admiration along with a lack of empathy. It starts by mm. early adulthood and occurs in a range of situations as signified by the existence of any of the five of the next nine standards. So grandiose self of importance, a fixation with fantasies of infinite success or brilliance. Did he think he was like amazing? Like to the point where, oh my God. We, God's he was gift the, to the world. God's like we needed him. Yes. Thank God yes. he's here yes. on this earth. Yes. Um, a credence that he or she is extraordinary and exceptional. We just did that one. A desire for un unwant unwarranted admiration, a sense of entitlement, no form of empathy at all, impersonally oppressive behavior, a resentment of others, and displays egotistical and conceited behavior attitudes. Mm. That's a true narcissist. Are all deadbeats narcissists? I'm going to say... And I want to I want to have this discussion. I'm going to say no, but the majority I probably would bet are some form. Right. You know what I mean? Because in order to leave your kids, you have to have a lack of empathy. Yes. Right. That checks that one off. I was going to say empathy. The lack of empathy is that's is huge, huge, because I'm so empathetic. You and feel I, everything. I feel everything. I'm always like literally Same. 10 steps ahead of everybody. Like I can walk into a room and read people like that. And yeah. it's, it's almost detrimental because when I walk into a room, I'm like, Ugh. yeah, but you take <laughs> on all that. A hundred percent. Like, and I'm yeah. always like, did I offend her? Did I do this? <laughs> did I do that? Like, I'm always that. Yeah. To not be able to do that at all, but especially when it comes to your own child. Well, I you actually, have to be some form of narcissist. I have, I have, if we're talking about, uh, deadbeats yeah. as narcissists. Yeah. I have a couple good quotes about that because yeah, um, like, I saw this thing and it said it was titled A Hard Pill to Swallow. And I'm just going to read the whole thing. It yeah. was from, um, uh, if we have an at, you know, for something I found, sure. like yeah, 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 yeah. It, it was at uh, Narc Abuse Coach. Oh, and okay. he said, this is a hard pill to swallow. And he said, narcissists do not love their children in the same way you do. Instead, they value their children for the supply they provide, their vulnerability, and their m malleability. Ma I always say this word wrong. Malleability? Like Rob, you're smart. molding? Yeah, yeah, I know the word. Yeah, I think it's malleability. Malleability, yeah. Malle yeah Which that. they use to control the children. Their love for their children is centered on the image they project, and that's where it ends. Though they may provide for their children's physical needs, they lack true parental love. Understanding this reality is crucial so you can strive to meet your child's needs and undo the harm caused by the narcissist. Wow. So it's not that they don't love their children, they just. I think for narcissists, it's all about supply. Yeah. It what is, What are you getting? Yeah. Like, what What do I get out of this? So, you know, I, I, it's so hard because so many single moms complain and say, well, they're just a narcissist. Right. Um, but I think really this, I just, this whole thing resonated with me because yeah. I was like, really, that's what it is. They're, you know, it's, it's a supply. The children yeah. are also a supply, which goes back to my situation why... I'm always accused of like, oh, you stole the baby or, you know, you don't let me see him, which is total bullshit. Door is open. Yeah. Um, the biggest lie told by a deadbeat, she doesn't let me see my kids. Yeah. Which is total BS. But it's never really about my son. It's never because right. otherwise he would send some child support. He would send clothes, anything that Working helps. Hard. And it's yeah. always about wanting to send something big like saying he wants to send a ps5 doesn't ever send it but mm -hmm. like it's always in the moment something so big like oh i'm gonna get you this big expensive thing yeah and it's not it's it's like making him feel poofy in the moment i, I mean i don't yeah. want to speak for him but that's what it comes across as for me right. and it's just supply yeah all of it every word out of his mouth and even the actions that they don't do, that they claim they're going to do, that's yeah. all just Feeding to them. feed themselves. Yeah. And they use the children for that. And then we're sitting here like, what? Are you, I'm, I feel crazy. Yeah. Like, like, am I, am I really seeing this? And that's why, like, in, our, in my circle, everyone that's around, they actually see it for what it is. And we all know that it's bullshit. And I just got to the point with my son, he's six, where he understands things a lot better now. And so he kept talking about like, oh, my dad, my daddy's gonna send me a PlayStation. Mm. And I just, I had to have a conversation with him. And I just said, I was like, sometimes people in life get really excited and they say they're gonna do something or want, you know, they act yeah. like they're gonna do it and it doesn't necessarily happen. So if that does happen, 
you know, if it doesn't happen, like, let's just keep it moving. But yeah. it's like, I don't want my son to feel let uh, down, let down. Yeah. And, and but that's also something I grew up with. You know, I haven't really talked about my situation because I'm the child of. Yeah. And I do. I mean, I've never said this out loud, but I do think my dad's a narcissist, too. Mm. He's older. So he can kind of get away with it more now because yeah. he's in his 70s. But I do think that there's narcissism. Narcissism is is made. They're not you're not just born a narcissist. It's made like by environmental. It's made by your parents and the way they treat you. And when it comes to fame, you have to think like, here's my dad who's been famous since he was, what, 20? Mm -hmm. 1972. Like, really like, famous. Like, really famous. It's not like his form of narcissism i think was bred from the fact that he's famous to the point where anywhere in the world mm -hmm. anywhere i mean unless you're you know in the plains of africa where they living don't have living under TVs. a rock and doesn't know <laughs> yeah. the band aerosmith everywhere he goes mm -hmm. people are like oh, yeah. and they will do anything for him any store any anything they just come up and they want pictures or they want to give him things and so it's like everywhere he goes people are like Bowing down, yeah. I'm not worthy, God. you know, the, yeah. the, the, the typical. And when you spend your whole life being treated like that, you don't know any other way. So for his form of narcissism, I, and I, maybe it's just because he's my dad and I'm sticking up for him, but I almost feel like, well, it's not really his fault. I think all celebrities to I an extent. Agree. Yeah. Because I know, I know a ton of celebrities and they all have a form of that. But I would never say... So and so is a narcissist. Right. But they have narcissistic tendencies. Right. And it's also it's just it's bred in them. Like it's, right. It's tattooed on them. Like it, it's not. Yeah. I don't know what the right term is, but. But there's things that happened that got to that point yes. where they now became a form of a narcissist. And I. But it's an too, okay narcissism. Almost. Right. It's this like, isn't like it's workable. We're fucking over our kid all the time and like yes this abusing deadbeat dad narcissism is way worse there's levels i yeah. think there's levels of everything right like depression you could be and i'm someone who's dealt with depression real depression and when people are sad sometimes and they're like oh, i was so depressed yesterday it's like <clears throat> that's hard for me because no. it's like were you sad or were you depressed, right? right? Like there's just these big words lately. Narcissist, gaslighting is everywhere now. Yeah. Gaslighting, gaslighting. It's like these terms, which A, there's a great part to that because of the awareness. Like I love that people now know that narcissism is a real thing, but you can't throw the word on everything. Yeah. I will say this. I talk to hundreds of women, single moms across the globe. I have a membership with them. I, I talk to them. I hear from them. I would say eight out of 10 of the women that I talk to that I know their stories their ex is a narcissist or has narcissistic tendencies. Mm. So I don't know if they're like diagnosed with MPD, but there is no doubt that the things that they're doing, some of those are narcissistic traits. You got to think like I, I, I can't imagine being in a situation and I know I'm a woman where I can like physically beat someone. Right. And be yeah. OK with that. Yeah. Like whether you learned that because your dad did it to your mom or whatever. Like, right. I could never. And that's maybe because I'm just so empathetic and emotional and i've also been on the other side of that but I, I just it it's like there's something yeah so wrong obviously about that yeah. but there's something so wrong inside you that where you can just close fist beat a woman yeah. or a child yeah or whatever the abuse is and just walk away i, I was in a, a relationship once where um this is something else i want to talk about because I don't know if you ever hear this from your 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 ladies. Yeah. Um, with my son's father and a previous relationship, I could never celebrate holidays, birthdays, my birthday, yeah, or any holiday, um, because it took away from him. God. Yeah. And so every holiday, he would somehow we'd get into a big fight, and then he'd be in fetal position on the floor crying in a, you know, this was like a whole other thing. He had way big mommy and daddy issues. Um, but we would always celebrate the day after and he would feel guilty. So he would go get me. I remember one time I came home and there was a coach purse. This was like early 2000s when coach was yeah. like, there was a coach purse, um, some little like weird silks, uh, scarf, flowers, and something else. I don't remember. And it was so just like sitting makeup. on the, 
sitting on the table. Yeah. And it was like his way of saying, I'm sorry. And I just was like, I left it there because I was like, no, no, you don't get to do what you just did to me yesterday. Yeah. And then buy me presents today. Like, what wasn't there like a Julia Roberts movie where the guy would do that? He would like beat her and then <laughs> oh my god, buy her um, presents. And then she ran away and killed him at the end. Sleeping with the enemy. I was love that, that movie. With, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just saw that literally like four months ago. And I it reminded me of that because yeah. I was like, no, no, no. You don't get to buy me fancy, expensive yeah, presents. Yeah, to make up. To well, make up. ruining special events and oh, special Every anything, single one. That is something that a lot of like the stories that I hear from women, they do that all the time because it's not about them. And that is a form of narcissism. That is so bizarre. The attention is not on them <laughs> and including their kids. I have also heard this. A lot of women say when, with deadbeats that the deadbeat got jealous of the baby and would be really pissed off because like you were spending too much time feeding your child. And I'm oh, like, God. are you kidding me? Rob? <laughs> have you ever now rob's a good guy rob's like the definition of an amazing dad rob's no. like the opposite of everything we're talking about rob would you or have you ever been jealous of your wife <laughs> spending time with the baby the new baby he has a new baby jealous of of, of the, the time that she's spending and that you don't have as much time with her. No, I'm not jealous. No, no, no. no. Or it's where you're if mad it, at any. the baby <laughs> yeah. for taking your Envious. time. No, 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 no. But no, things if, have if changed, any. obviously. Yeah. No, if anything, sometimes I'm like a little jealous of the fact that they get to spend time together. Right. Right. You know, but. Not like, like envious, though, that like. No. She's fucking breastfeeding and I'm over here sitting here like, what is going on? These are the stories that no, I that's hear. Looney Tunes. Looney that's, Tunes. That's, that's... Narcissistic abuse. Yeah. It's crazy. And I, when I hear these stories, I think about my mother and I, my mother was so abused by my father and I'm so grateful that my mother left my father when she did. My mother gave birth very early. I was born at seven months premature. Um, and she left and I didn't have to grow up with my with what my older brother had to deal with, which was physical beatings. Horrible, oh. horrible. What's I mean, the age difference? My brother, it's seven years. Oh, so, so he really all of it. Yeah. And like when my mother would tell me stories of the broken ribs and the black eyes and that um, she had to have two teeth replaced because he knocked them out and stuff. Even now, I'm like getting upset about it because I never forgot the those stories stick with me still and every time she'd leave the door open for like do you want to go visit dad he's you know in rikers island he was usually away incarcerated my brother and her would always go mm -hmm. and i always stayed back and it, i always thought even as a kid and she left always left the door open right. like never wanted to talk bad about him you have your own relationship my brother has a great relationship well a good relationship with him still today which is weird to me because it's like you went through all that and i didn't but interesting I, I do you want to get into that I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is what we're here for. I was going to ask you, are, is your dad in your life? Um, no, but he'll message me once in a while and he'll like try to message me on Facebook or and I, I'll say this. I know my dad loves me. I know my father loves me. My father is a drug addict to the tens. I was one. So it's not it's not about judgment there. But my father is just a drug addict who was extremely abusive, probably still would be. And I chose not to have a relationship with him. And now that my mother's gone, I think that he feels even, I don't know if he feels bad about what happened in the past or what, but he tries really hard right. to reach out to me. And I do reciprocate. It's not like I ignore him, but I have no, there's no piece of me that's right, ever no wanted desire. that because I love my mom so much. Right. And I thought, wait, this man beat you so badly that this is a true story. She had to defend herself in the kitchen one time at a family barbecue. She was in the kitchen and he kept hitting her and there was people outside and family and I was very young. I think I was one. This is the thing people don't realize too. Just because you leave your abuser, it doesn't mean that like you don't once in a while have him back for the kids mm -hmm. or whatever. So they were separated. But anyway, the, the beating got so bad in the kitchen that she took a steak knife and she stuck it in my father's neck, in the back of his neck, and he fell down. She took the steak knife. This is now 12, 15 years of her going through this abuse. She met him when she was 13, 14, homeless. They were like being beat every single day by this man. She took the steak knife. She twisted the handle off. She went out into the barbecue, passed everybody, got got me out of my little kiddie pool, mm -hmm. threw the handle of the knife in the kiddie pool, called 911 on herself and said, um, I just killed my ex-husband. I did it. 
I have my son with me right now. My other son's good. Come, come now. He's dead in the kitchen. He didn't die. And she was in court for attempted murder. And they looked at all of the evidence of the beatings and of the hospital records and of the police reports and not even my mother calling the police, the neighbors calling the police because my mother at that time thought she deserved it. And the judge looked at my mother and said, this was self-defense. You're free to go, ma'am. And, and walked out. And that doesn't happen for a lot of women. That is no. called reactive abuse. And a lot of women are serving life sentences right now because they just couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, They couldn't take it anymore and they needed it to stop. So you know what? They took care of that situation. Um, and it's a really hard situation. And I know it's like it's even hard for me to talk about because every time I think about my mother, I think about the abuse when she was alive and still and horrible just stories that I can't get out of my brain. And it goes back to what you were saying. How do you, especially as a man, physically beat a woman? And then also when there's children involved. Yeah. How does that happen? I don't know. Like, I don't understand where right. that comes yeah. from. Where, you know, is that narcissism or is that just you're an abusive fuck, right? So we put that word on, oh, my God, he's a terrible fucking abuser. That is a narcissist. Maybe. I know he's an abuser. But I don't know if he's a narcissist. Let's break right. that down a bit more, right? So are all deadbeats narcissists? I don't know, but I think there's tendencies that you have to have. Tendencies, yeah. Right? You have to have lack you have to lack empathy if you leave your kids. There's I no wanna doubt. I wanna just go back to one thing that you said where you said, I know my father loved me. Yeah. Which I think is something that uh all of us moms, when we are talking to our children, and I'm talking about the healthy moms. Yeah. I don't ever bash my son's father to my son. He has no idea. That was my mom, yeah. And I always keep it, if we do talk about him, I always tell him, if you ever wanna ask me any questions, go right ahead. We don't ever, he doesn't ask about him, but the one thing that I always say to him if we are talking about him is like, your father loves you. Yeah. And I really push that. And I think a lot of us healthy moms, that's like the only thing we have. Yeah. And we don't want our children to feel unloved because that's what we're doing. We're constantly showing them we love them and we don't ever want them to think that someone doesn't love them, or especially their, their father. So f to hear you say, like, I know my father loved me. Yeah. I, I love that. Does. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I love that. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, whether your mom instilled that or it's just intuition. Yeah. But knowing that your dad, even though he's a piece of shit, still loves you. Right. That means something to you. Yeah. And that is like the one thing that I guess centers you and makes all of it okay. I mean, maybe not okay, but like a little piece of it. Okay. Like you find the one positive thing. You have to. And it's love. And I and yeah. it, maybe it's hippie-ish of me. I love love. My son loves to love. He yeah. loves hearts. The word love. Yeah. He gets very excited. Anything I was, that's I have a note with a heart on it in here. There's a sign I in your house it. I noticed and there was you guys wrote on like this little chalkboard thing or something. And I think that there was like the word love on there, but you have like a lot of things. It's not hippie-ish, it's real. And here's the thing, some, I'm not giving anybody a pass, including my father. There is no excuse for that. But sometimes you only know what you know and there are uh, there's things that happen generational. And I'm curious, like with your dad, before the fame, right? Because I think a lot of famous people do have narcissism. And I think a lot of famous people need to have some narcissism <laughs> in order to be that famous. Yeah. I think you have to really love yourself. I think you have to know you're the shit. I think you, not lack of empathy. I think all the other things. Well, though. that's the whole thing, especially with musicians. You're trying to be the best. Yeah. You're trying to write the best song. You're trying to do the best movie. At that levels too. Like yeah. that's like you're, so we're you going have, number one. You're, you're almost forced to think you are the best. Yeah. Because that's the mentality you have to be in. Like the best actors think about them like leonardo dicaprio all these people they're so good at what they do yeah it's because they truly believe they are the best yeah and so there's that line there where it's like which is psychological not a bad thing, right um some of that's not bad i don't know i want maybe it's believe. bad for people in their lives i, I mean yeah. i don't think he has kids but you know i yeah. would assume that the narcissistic musician that has to write the best songs and be the best and puts his whole life into his music speaking right like i know what i'm talking about here well you do um, kind of yeah, yeah so, do. i mean for us growing up right he my dad loves being on stage that's his favorite place to be yeah and when you're a child you want your dad's favorite place to be is with you oh yeah and so from 
tiny children up to I'm 44 years old now. Like, I still want to be that. And yeah. sometimes we still battle with like, well, how come he doesn't want to be with us? Mm. And my little sister, Chelsea, and I, we talk about it all the time. We're like, well, we just have to let him you do like what he wants to do. at some point. It's that you let you them do thing. You do or you don't. Right. And I, and, and I always talk to her. I'm like, it's not. He doesn't, it's not that he doesn't love us and doesn't want to spend time with us. It's just that he gets his serotonin, endorphins and serotonin. All of that. He gets it from being on high. stage, looking out and seeing babes in the front row yeah. going bonkers over him, yeah. singing the songs that he wrote that are the most classic songs you can imagine. Dream on. Like oh hitting, and he still hits those high notes. Yeah. And people go fucking ape shit over it. And yeah. that's being praised. And being adored and loved and like making people happy, that's what makes them happy. Yeah. And then side note, there's us kids who just want our dad. Mm. We want our dad to come home and eat a spaghetti dinner yeah. and watch TV and be with us and be present and be around our children and know our children. And that's one of the things I think that we all battle right now is that all of us kids, there's four of us, mm -hmm. we all have children now. And yeah. we all just want our children to know our dad because he is such a wonderful person to be around. He's yeah. Papa. Yeah. He's like, he's animated. You know, he's he really is that like elf in the woods, you know, yeah. with the trinkets and everything clinks. Yeah. And what, you know, you look at him and he's got things in his hair. Like yeah. that's him. It's we like have magical. Yeah. Growing up. I mean, if I could show you our house we grew up in, like there's you know, eyes and mouths and all the trees outside. And there's a tree that's in the middle of the kitchen. Our our um our center island yeah. is a piano top. And oh, there's a cool. tree growing and there's we have just things hanging off of it. Yeah. And it's just like one of the coolest land. things. The ceiling has clouds and there was like these plastic things that look like bubbles on them. So we just grew up in this very magical yeah. trinkets. We all have trinkets in our house and we just we want our kids to know that. Yeah. And it's hard because they just don't. He's on a whole other planet now. He's also 76 and yeah. he's in pain because he's been on his feet his whole whole fucking life yeah i so it's funny because like he's got bad feet he's had surgery on him and he, it's just a a big part of his life where his feet always hurt and i saw somebody like making fun of him his toes because they're all crooked and i wanted to be like you motherfucker i think it was like what's the fat jewish on instagram or whatever that guy oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and he did this whole thing like steven tyler's toes whatever the fuck he said fuck and i you, remember dude. commenting on there like let me find you in the yeah. street because let's, let's this go, dude man. has been entertaining people for what for now, 50, 50 years, dude, fucking years on his feet dancing. Oh, that fucking what guy. is up with Steven Tyler's tangled toes? Yeah. And I'm like, hello, dude. He's been standing on them. <laughs> he's and literally been standing there and jumping for 50 years. Yeah. And it's like, it's not fair. And I, it, I get very like angry and stuff, but it's like, come on. So there's there's this thing with my father and your father where your father, I saw a video of your dad with um, Axe, with your son, mm -hmm. and um, the way he was interacting and he was, was doing- he singing Walk This Way? Yes, dun, dun, but there was dun, dun, also, dun, dun, dun. there's like voices sometimes that your dad does even on stage, like the, <laughs> like I can't explain it. Like the, like I'm really bad at it, but like the- Yeah, I don't know though. <laughs> <laughs> like the little like making kids laugh voice thing okay. that my dad does and have my my dad's an artist too my dad's like anything creative that I have it's from my father he's a, mm. he's an actual like a painter and he's amazing um like which really pisses me off because you could have done so many things like what the fuck so anyway <laughs> there's so mu there's something about your dad with like the way that he's so and it's the animation it's that the animation my father has yeah. like. And I know I've said some really like rough things about my dad, but like there's a part of him that's still like really like childlike and yeah. like can make any little kid light up because of the voice yeah. stuff. So anyway, I've always thought that before I even like we met. It's the animation. I was like, yeah, I was he like played, my dad. Um, he played a character called uh, like Nim Galoo oh, in yeah. this movie. It's an animated movie. Yeah, and he's the king of the forest or he plays this blobby little that thing oh <laughs> and it's so great and it's so him i mean I minus the blobbiness because he's so skinny <laughs> yeah <laughs> but in the movie he's just this i forget what he's called he's like the king of the forest or he's the the glowworm of the forest. i don't know he's something 
whatever. But that's really him. He's yeah. just like this like creatures and clinkety clankety Animated and like and we're everything. we're very gypsy. Yeah. You know, we call each other gypsy. My Liv always says gypsy. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. because we're just very like stereotypical like cartoon gypsy family yeah like i'm surprised we're not in covered wagons with you know <laughs> velvet drapes because that's yeah. how i mentally feel we are yeah um but that's that's like, kind of like a little bit of the osbournes or am i way off they're more like dark 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 like okay. metal like so take the dark out yeah though. take they're no really... i'm the only one that's like the metal really dude one in the family everybody yeah. else is like let's well, dance dad. around the fire and listen to the beatles and i'm yeah. like Put on some fucking Put some Metallica. Slipknot on. No. Oh my god, I love Slipknot, dude. Oh. I didn't know you like Slipknot. I get down with Guar. I'm friend. Don't play with me. Oh, yeah, god. yeah, I could get down with the down. But <laughs> I'm not your typical gay, okay? I fucks with Guar. <laughs> Oh my God, I went to a Guar concert. Can I tell you really you quick? It was my brother. And they fucking ripped their heads off yeah. in this concert. And there was blood coming, like fake blood. And I was like maybe 13 or 14. <laughs> and I was living and I was like, give me the blood. Oh my God. But it was so like, oh my God. Like there was something so like, ah. Oh yeah. Well, that's Guar. what it is. I think it's people like don't understand like heavier music. Yeah. It's not just like blah, 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 blah. blah. No, I don't understand there's... what they're saying. They're just, blah. it's it's a release. Yes. And for me, at, as a, a 14 year old who oh. was full of a lot of anger and being 14 sucks by the way totally, sucks. totally different topic but, but finding like... bands like obviously i was older than 14 but i found slipknot yeah. and that was I'm, I'm friends with Corey the singer and i we've talked about it so many times about how oh being friends with slipknot okay Corey, must be nice. his name is Corey, okay and he's awesome he must be when i <laughs> um when i was feeling really uh, like I wanted to express to my dad how I felt and I didn't know how to tell him. Maybe my coming out <laughs> of mm. my emotions. Yeah. Same way someone would same come idea. out. Be, yeah, yep. like I was so scared to tell him that I was like depressed and upset in life and that maybe he caused it and my mom, him, him leaving me with her, all that stuff and I didn't know what to do and the Slipknot album, the very first one, mm -hmm. just Slipknot, mm -hmm. I gave it to him. And I said, I bought him a copy and I said, listen to this. If you want to understand how I feel, wow. listen to this. And months went by. I think it was like four, four to six months go by. And he calls me sobbing. Mm. And he was like, I just I went for the a walk down the back. We have this beautiful back road in Massachusetts. And it's just, it's a single paved road with just beautiful dead trees there's a dead tree that's still there that's just trees, gorgeous and just surrounded by woods deer come out wild turkeys and it's just a beautiful short walk maybe 10 minutes but it's just it's something that we always used to do we'd walk after dinner so he went for a walk down the back road and there was a dead log and he just sat on it with his walkman it was a walkman i remember yeah man. and he listened Walkmans to the whole great. album and just cried in the woods God. It's like your and letter to him. It was. And he called me and he was like, I'm so sorry. And oh, like we man. had this whole thing. But I, I've told Corey that story because Corey's a huge Aerosmith fan. He loves my dad. And he was like, it was like his world got flipped upside down. But I was like, you don't know how much you helped me yeah. have a relationship and a bond with my dad. And it's that music is so heavy. And it was such a release because I was so upset and just so like just pissed off at life. And listening to that music released that for me. Yeah. Because his words and his angst and everything that was in that. And I was like, here, dad, yeah. <laughs> you want to know how I fucking feel inside? Yeah. This is me inside me right now. And he just was like, in that moment, like, wow. And, and then I, I got to introduce them years later and it was really a sweet oh, moment. Yeah. But Full yeah, circle. it's uh, uh, so when, you know, people talk about heavy music, I'm like, there's a, a beauty in it that you might not be able to see. Yeah. And you have to be hurting. There's a hurt in there that it it's very healing. Yeah. I think not to get off off subject. No, but. there's such a beauty and catharticism, I think, into finding ways to heal through any kind of oh, tough such situation. Such a good album. I know all those songs. Oh, God. Like, From front to back, there's some albums. Um, you know who who was that for me at that age was Alanis, Alanis Morissette. Oh. The Jagged Little Pill, man. I, I needed that in I my just, life. I can't look at her without thinking about... Tell me, Uncle, oh, Uncle Uncle Joey, Uncle Joe, was it Dude, Joey or oh, Jesse? Yeah. No, Joey. Jesse, Uncle Joey, yeah, Uncle Joey, I, 
in the movie theater. I <laughs> loved her, man. I still love her. She is amazing. I think she has a podcast out. God, I love her. But, um, you know, going back to narcissism and dealing with one, they, if they're a true narcissist, that doesn't change. And I think when you're trying to leave a relationship and you're wondering, will things ever get better? Can I make this work? Will he change? You cannot change. Oh, see that that album I could listen to front to back. That 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 album changed my we life. We need to do a music uh, episode. Oh, it's in the plan. Because I have babe. a couple other it's ones and I, with stories. Because I was just yeah. thinking like, Hole, live through this. Oh, Hole. That was okay. So Hole opened <laughs> Not up. To, for... I don't want to. Cut yeah, that, cut I you know. off here. We're like totally into like music, but <laughs> yeah. like there's some albums, man, that are, it's like your story. It's like, I don't even need to say anything. You just told yeah. it for me. One through 14 on the CD. Remember CDs? God, we're mm. old. You know, there's like TikToks now where kids are handed like a I CD. Or tape. Or tape or like an old phone. Like, you know, the actual, and they don't know how phone? to fucking work it. Oh, yeah. And I feel so old watching like a 19 year old have no idea how to work like a cordless phone. There's a, um, a uh, payphone shell on yeah. uh, Laurel Canyon Boulevard in Studio City. And we were driving by. I don't know if it's still there, but Axe was like, what is that? Because it looks almost like maybe military or something. And I was like, oh, that's a that's a payphone. And yeah. he was like, what the heck is a payphone? And I was no like, idea. well, there was a time where you had to put a quarter yeah. in a phone. Yeah. And you had to know somebody's phone number. You had to know somebody's phone number. Oh, God, I don't know anyone's I know no number. one's. I know my own and that is it. Rob, do you know your wife's phone number? Yes. You know your wife. Okay, and I, I don't know my, I don't my know. boyfriends. That's terrible. I just know the I'd first. I'd be fucked. I know the area phone. code. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do I, I don't even know if I know the area code. But That's yeah, it's crazy, crazy that they but will like, never know. They'll never know, man. I know, I know my family's phone number they know my wife's phone number and then i know my best friend's phone number and that's i do i know my best friend and my house phone in massachusetts <laughs> oh I, I that's have, it i know my house phone too yeah like my old one yeah it's like the ones that really matter i need to do that though i remember my phone number from childhood do you when when you didn't have um you didn't have to dial the first three no not the area code but oh, the three right. numbers after it yeah, you just dialed the same four yeah 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 i, never, I remember yeah. yeah they'll never know yeah that's a shame Two two one. Five two two and seventy five seven was my home phone. I remember <laughs> that was my New there, Hampshire. Yeah, yeah. So hope that's not somebody's number now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't totally dial is. that number. So sorry. Please. Oh God. Let's maybe take that out. So, um, <laughs> with narcissism and actual MPD, the question that we asked in the beginning of the episode are all deadbeats narcissists. The answer to that, I believe, is no, because. They could be mutually exclusive, but I do think, and I think we can both agree on the fact that there are traits of narcissists that all deadbeats in some capacity have, even yeah. if it's one of them that we read off in the beginning of the episode. There is something in there. Didn't we talk about uh, briefly yesterday? It was, I had it saved and oh, where is it? in the microphone. It was, oh, bad actions versus bad traits. Yes. Yes. And so I think that's a whole other episode. Yeah. <laughs> but, but like you can have you can bad have action. bad uh, narcissistic actions. Yeah. But they're not necessarily uh, narcissistic traits. I could have been selfish right now and like took your water away because I wanted a drink and I wasn't thinking. But am I selfish? Is my trait inside selfish or was I just selfish really quick? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you ha can have bad moments and bad- Moment to moment. Right. Narcissism. But am I selfish as like, <laughs> right. so it's like the same thing with narcissism. You could have bad actions and do bad things, but is it in you? And I think that that goes back to someone like your dad. Yeah, I was just gonna say, cause yeah, he's a total narcissist. I'll say it. But is it the- I might not say it to his face. Is but... <laughs> it the level of the negative side but, of the narcissistic stuff? But that's the stuff. thing, he's not like a bad, it's not like does he care about others? Yes. Oh God. So there's not the yeah. lack of empathy. So maybe he's not a narcissist. There's but there's traits, maybe. Yeah, and I so think yeah, that, that's what it goes to. He's not an know, actual narcissist. But he does he have narcissistic MPD. tendencies. But like, yeah, yeah. there's certain yeah, yeah. things. But to have actual empathy. So I think our point in this too is the fact that the word and the awareness for narcissism yeah. is great. I was just thinking if I went back and answered all those questions yeah. with my dad yes. in mind, I would probably say no to a lot of those. Most of them, maybe one or two, right. I would say yes to. So maybe that's really where it comes down to. It is just the There's tendency. Yeah, right. There's tendency versus 
actual within you and you live it embedded yeah yeah so again narcissism trigger word one that's thrown out all the time along with gaslighting and all of those other words there's a good part about it because we want awareness but not everything and everyone is a narcissist just because they suck and i also think it's not fair to just assume or just call a baby daddy Right. Because you're bitter or you're upset. Right. Just to throw the word out. Like, let's let's really yeah. dive into it and really. And I've been guilty of that. Yeah. I know people are going to look back on some of my videos and go, you've said that. I have. And I've done my work and education now that I have a platform and I've looked at real narcissism. And yes, the majority of the deadbeat stories that I hear, that is some form of narcissism in yeah. there. But to say that every single deadbeat is a narcissist well also know, the women that reach out to you they've already seen your content yeah. so they're already going oh right i agree with what he says right you're not necessarily getting all of the you're Correct. just getting a certain type yes um that already like associate with that so yes, yeah I, that's I, true I, I think it's fair to say they that they're not that. all yeah. yeah so if you've answered the questions we asked in the beginning about your current partner or past one, and most of those questions were answered with a yes, <laughs> make a plan. Get out, <laughs> run. That is a narcissistic abuser, and they don't change. In fact, they usually get worse. Mm -hmm. Worse with time. And if you get out, they're just gonna find another supply, so. Yeah, a It's leech. better off them than you. <laughs> and that's, that's sad really... to say, but like, be thankful if it's not happening to you and someone else, yeah. so. Narcissism spelled backwards is deadbeat. If they can lie, we can too. Subscribe, do the thing, ring the bell, and we'll see you on the next episode.